Today we're going to be unboxing, setting up, testing, and reviewing. God, a lot's going to be happening to this thing. Having our way with a slide and clip backbone style controller on steroids. This has magnetic hall effect thumbstick modules that are virtually stick drift proof, magnetic faceplate, which lets you get to the swappable thumbstick caps, which are also full size console style caps. Love to see that. Full size linear Xbox triggers with a good amount of resistance, and around backside, two programmable rear buttons that are actually ergonomic and don't suck meat. And as this is a mobile controller, it holds your phone ever so delicately with rubber padding and a swiveling USB-C port, which I've never seen before but greatly appreciate because I feel like it's going to F up my phone less. Without further ado, let's do the dirty, do the deed, let's do the review, and you know what to do. Let's just, you don't have to do anything, just hang out. I'll take it from here. This is your controller, Captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and mollywhopping the back paddles. Mm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've tested almost 100 custom and premium controllers, and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller Captain out. A quick disclaimer for my audience, the stallions and stallionettes. This controller was sent for review, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about it, so if there's any cons, shortcomings, or areas of improvement, you're going to hear about it, so these companies make better products over time. Over here on the landing page, the GameSir website, this is the latest and greatest controller from GameSir. I don't know, I was talking like that, I guess just excited by the layout of this website. We're looking at an $80 backbone clone style controller, a slip and clip with support for iPhones with USB-C, so the current generation, the 15s, and Android. Some of the key notable features of this controller you do have, magnetic hall effect thumbstick modules, virtually stick drift proof, also hall effect triggers, which isn't nearly as much as a selling factor as these companies might think, these manuals manufacturers, slathering that on their landing pages, massive placards, it's not that big of a deal. But this is, a movable Type-C port is fantastic for donning and unmounting your phone. Also, the two rear buttons, we'll talk about them later, they are phenomenal, feel just like the full-size GameSir G7. Universal compatibility, as this thing does expand very wide, very girthy. Along those lines, there's a gap of about 5 millimeters, which will give you clearance for your cameras. You do also have pass-through charging, so you can juice up your phone while using this controller. That's pretty standard, I haven't really encountered a mobile controller that doesn't do that unless it's a real stinker, but you do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is sick because that technically adapts your iPhone to have a headphone jack. Also cool, you have these magnetized face plates which pop off and allow you to swap on three different sizes of thumbstick caps, although one of them is completely useless and looks like a little niplet. And this is a very important to note, this does support PS Remote Play, so you don't need to get yourself a $200 portal there, bud. You can get yourself this $80 joint which has Hall Effect thumbstick modules, better ergonomic, well, no, it's not as comfortable as the portal, but it does a lot of other good stuff. Very important to note here, you do need to hold down the options and sandwich button. That's not what that's called. These two giblets, hold them together, long press them sons of bees for two seconds, and it will switch between modes. PS for piece of shit or PlayStation. Oh, droid, get me green Android over here for controller supported games. And then G-Touch from a gangster's touchscreen only games. So that's fucking cool because what that allows you to do is use the controller for touchscreen only games. Kind of cool. It doesn't work all the time. And some of the supported software, you're going to like to see this. Xbox Game Pass, PlayStation Remote Play, Steam Link for your PC games. I don't know what the hell this Moonlight thing is. And it's just showing you a bucket list of games you can play on iOS and Android. I recognize some of these. Asphalt, Diablo, Minecraft. I've, I know most, most of these. Grid, Pod Mobile. This guy's gaming experience is culminating into his cargo shorts because of the controller in hand. We're going to find out if the Galileo is my gals. We bust into the packaging, included accessories on the GameSir G8. We reviewed their full size game pads and indeed we have gotten buck fly like a g7 during those reviews but this is the g8 the newest the latest and greatest bigger number so probably better you do have a couple of qr codes on the side you will have some of the features and tech specs on the rear if you want to pause pinch and zoom you may do that now and the box's contents are going to be on the side as well as the one and only platform which is going to be android so unless you have an android phone this ain't gonna do nothing for you it's only the box that tells those sweet sentimental lies if you go on the landing page it is going to tell you that this works with iPhone 15s because they have a USB-C port. This is an iPhone 15 Pro nestled within and it works. I've played three games on it, a racing game, a zombie runner, and what the hell was the other one? It was like miniature golf or putt-putt or something, but it worked with the right thumbstick, so that was cool. You know, mobile games, little time wasters, if you will. I'm not over here playing full-blown console experiences on this thing, but you could because you have a console-style controller. But I just wanted to quickly mention this does work with iPhone 15s and it'd probably work with previous iPhone generations. You just have to get a lightning to USB-C adapter, although don't quote me that the adapter would actually 
actually work for you. It might not, as it is only quoted as working for iPhone 15 series and Android. Then on the inner box, once you slide that sleeve to the side, you see the new catchphrase or slogan, a new marketing tagline, Madman baby, measure what can be measured, like your schmeckle, and make measurable what extends beyond. That is freakishly confusing and makes no sense and doesn't apply to a controller, but I will say I do like this little holographic pattern on here. It reminds me of like a Pokemon card or something. Lifting up from the top to take a peek at the holy shit at the Galileo G8. Pretty basic packaging. You're not going to blow your tits back as this is an $80 gamepad and not a $300 premium or pro controller. You don't have any laser cut foam in there, just some plastic holding your included accessories in place, which luckily there are quite a few of. Inside that box is going to be your documentation. You have your little cockle doodle doo. How do you do? This guitar pick is actually your quality control placard. Plug with the socials, a couple of QR codes you can scan, a couple of languages, one of which is English, my native tongue. Throw that to the side. You have this massive accordion, which folds out not to make music, but to explain how the controller works. As that is your instruction manual, pamphlet, or brochure, and you could read it, sure, or you could just watch this video and I'll show you everything about this controller. I'm not a big fan of this format or layout for the instruction manual. However, I do like that there is a physical manual in the box as opposed to just a QR code or not even that at all. We've seen that recently. And you do also have the option of scanning the QR codes at the top for your language if you do want a PDF document to save to your phone. I kind of prefer that route because you can pinch and zoom and there is full color pictures as opposed to black and white. Starting with the thumbsticks, these are full size caps and also the stems or shafts. So you have full size range of motion and then you also have very grippy rubber on the center and sides as these are almost identical to stock Xbox thumbstick caps. You also have anti-friction rings so you're going to glide along very smooth plastic when you're on the outside of the thumbstick gates. I love to see that. And not all anti-friction rings are created equal. These ones are some of the best that I've felt. Also clicking down L3 and R3, you're clicking in the sticks. Very tight, very tactile. These are Hall Effect sticks so they are virtually stick drift proof unless that recentering spring goes out on you which can and does happen. These are uncomparable to any mobile controller that I've used. Not only backbone clip style controllers but also full size mobile controllers. This just feels fantastic. Swapping the thumbstick caps is supremely easy. I was dropped on my head as a child and I figured this out in about two seconds. Get a fingernail up underneath these palm grips, pry up, and you are able to remove the bases of the thumbstick caps. Also, we can get a good look, a peek, a little peekaboo, how do you do with these Hall Effect thumbstick modules. But the pre-installed sticks are gonna be some low-rise concaves, very similar to stock Xbox sticks. And then you have a short dome, very similar to what you see with the Elite Series 2, love that. Then you've got this tiny little nipple over here, which I'm not going to be flicking or licking or doing anything with because I, I don't like it, it's too small for me. So what I'm gonna do here is take this high-rise concave, which is really just like a mid-rise, ever so slightly taller than the pre-installed joints. I mean, just a couple of millimeters kicked up. This could be double this height. We'll put that on the old aiming stick and then put the stock height concave over here on the left as that is just for movement. We're gonna snap these back on and we're gonna get to skittily be diddling. Oh, I was trying to be cool and like throw it on and Ooh, there we go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The D-pad is a bit of a mixed sack for me. I do like the way it feels. Tight, tactile, clicky while not being too loud. Roll-offs are yeah, decent. Diagonal inputs aren't too- So apparently that clip got corrupted. I was just jaw jacking and lip smacking for like five minutes and I'll try and recapture that moment, the emotion there, but the D-pad feels pretty good as it is tactile and clicky. Roll-offs are pretty good. Diagonal inputs also nice. Not abnormally quiet. Also like the surface material, the actual plastics the GameSir went with. What I don't like is gonna be the position Although GameStar didn't really have a choice here because your phone is going to be clipped in the center Which is generally where your d-pad was going to be so you kind of have to cock your thumb at an awkward angle to hit this bad boy But that's not GameStar's fault. That's pretty much synonymous with all backbone style controllers as for the face or action buttons I have no idea where this massage my plums purple theme color went with I've always liked this colorway I liked it on the Nintendo SNES Which is definitely where this is ripped from generally Android products share the same lime green theme color as Nvidia or Xbox However, I think this gray and purple looks really fantastic I'm fine with the spacing and general feel of these face buttons, despite the fact they are a typical membrane switch. What I'm not too big a fan of is the sizing, as they are quite a bit smaller than typical buttons, but that could also fall in line with the fact this is a mobile controller, so we're going for portability. As for the accessory buttons, that is going to be the game sir button down here. It is in a good place if you need to pop into your menu, your overlay, if you will, and then you have this M button and this other little doodad or doohickey. You've got your pause and options up here, also in a good position, although kind of hard to hit still, especially this one, as it is very close to the left thumbstick. But again, there is no design
design alternatives here because it's a very compact controller. Along the lines of the accessory button suite is going to be how do you actually mount your Android phone? It is very, very good because you have these rubberized coating on the back, the sides. Also, good extension here. So if you have a big fat phone, you should be able to make it fit. And one thing I really do like, I haven't seen this on any other mobile clip style controllers, is the USB-C port actually swivels or sways back and forth, which I think will take a lot of pressure off that USB-C port. And a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which I do also love to see becoming more of a relic with controllers nowadays. On the back, you are gonna have two programmable rear buttons, R4 and L4. These rear buttons are supremely dope and ergonomically they are almost identical to the GameSir full-size G7 and G7 SE, which is pretty impressive considering this is a mobile clip style backbone clone controller. That's really good to have high quality back buttons like that. As for the triggers, they are pretty much ripped directly off of an Xbox series controller. Good range of motion. You do have a little bit of stippling on top with these dots, which actually do provide a good amount of grip and then a little bit of slick plastic with a sharp cut off, but good resistance. Nice linear squeeze. These are killer. Only thing that would make them a little more killer, a little more criminal, would be some trigger locks or stops. Uh, what is not okay is these bumpers. They are pretty goddamn small. And if you have larger index fingers and you try and reach over, you're not hitting anything over here, except probably the volume rocker on your phone. And you can hit these with the meat of your finger, but they just don't feel very good, not very confidence inducing, and don't feel very good with this sharp little cutoff here. It's not very ergonomic. So the bumpers are going to be a 5 out of 10. These triggers over here, a 9 out of 10. Accessory buttons, 7 out of 10 and rear buttons, 8 out of 10. So unfortunately, and it really is unfortunate because this is a pretty good gamepad, and if you're already spending $80 on a controller, it'd be kind of nice if you could use it on PC as well, even if it is just wired. But going wired with a USB-C cable and switching between all three of the modes, which you're going to see by it changing colors. Blue for PlayStation. Hello white for not, and then green for Android, and there is zero response in gamepad tester or any launchers. This has zero PC support, which in my opinion is going to be a huge con. And right quick, while we're on the website, I want to go over the model lineup because they do have a slew of gamepads, most of which I have reviewed on the channel, including the DJ Khaled, the T4 Khaled, and then they have another one with the G7 and the G7 SE, and the Cyclone, and the Cyclone Pro, and all of these dropped pretty much back to back. Game Sir, I know you're watching the review. X3 over here, the BMW X3, I'd like to review this joint next. Send her on down the road to Gamer Heaven for a bashing. And then anything past this invisible tear line, I would steer clear of because they are the older versions or generations of everything up here. As for a warranty, we've talked about it on full size controllers and we'll talk about it on a mobile slide and clip. You got 30 days to return that sucker if you don't like it and 12 months to replace it if something goes wrong. It just says replace. You can't like get your money back or anything. You have a warranty, it'll swap it out for a freshie. But by registering and subscribing, giving them a little bit of show Sugar, you can extend that warranty by six months, so a year and a half is what I'm reading here. As for the pros, cons, and verdict on the G8 Galileo, we are going to start with the cons because there really isn't that many of them, but first of all, the fact that you cannot use this on PC period is kind of funky chicken because there is a USB-C port, so if there was any kind of brain on board, any PCB printed circuit board where it could just recognize that it's plugged in and getting data from the PC, that'd be fucking awesome. Because it does feel great in the hand, it doesn't even feel like a mobile controller, in fact, when you don't have a phone in there, it just feels like a normal gamepad, maybe a little bit wider. So if you had big hands, this would be great for you. So that is a huge con that you can only use this for Android and iOS 15. And keep in mind, the only iPhones you're going to be able to use are the 15s with the USB-C ports, as it's not officially supported to use an adapter from Lightning. The next con is going to be the bumpers. They're not ergonomically very comfortable. And if you have larger hands, you might have a hard time hitting them with your tips. You can use the meat, but you won't be hitting it with the tip. Now onto the pros. Quite simply, this is the best $80 backbone style controller I've seen. I know Razer makes a really kick-ass one that's on sale pretty frequently around the $80 mark, and then the OG backbones are also very nice. This is better, in my opinion. Not only do the ergonomics feel just like a comfy console controller, that's a tongue twister, took me a couple times off camera to get, get it down, but you have these magnetic Hall Effect thumbsticks, virtually stick drift proof unless the recentering spring goes out on you, also really nice rubber pads, and a swiveling or moving USB-C port, which I've never seen before, so all the niceties for mounting your phone. The best D-pad I've tested on a mobile controller, the best rear buttons I've tested on a mobile controller, the best triggers I've tested on a mobile controller, taking a lot of W's for the mobile controller segment, which I don't spend a lot of time in because I'm not a mobile gamer. I do a lot of handheld gamings with things like the Switch, Portal, and handheld PCs, Steam Deck, and ROG Ally, but when it comes to mobile gaming, strapping my phone into a backbone and getting to flick in the touchscreen? No, not usually. The mobile gaming I do is like when I'm stuck out in town and I'm maybe playing Angry Birds for five minutes or something, which I don't need a backbone style controller for. I don't need any controller for. I can just swipe my greasy mitts across the touchscreen. Oh, uh...
<laughs> but if you're a mobile gamer and you are looking for this style of clip controller, the slide and clip backbone style controller. So not a full size gamepad and you're going to prop up your phone with a kickstand on your desk out in front of you and use a regular gamepad. That's not the route you're taking. You want to put your phone into a mount and clip. This is the best one I've tested. Also pretty impressive. This is $80. I think GameSir could easily charge $100 for this coming out of the gate, at least at launch. But nope, 80 bucks. Totally reasonable. It is linked in the description below. Comment section. Have your way with it. Ravage it. Don't be kind with it. This is linked in the description below if you want to check it out. And I will see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below to get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of gamer heaven join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where i go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my ph balance is on point just kidding starting june i'm going to be live streaming a lot thanks for watching this has been ak40 kevin hosting gamer heaven and i'll see you tomorrow because i upload daily all the time 60 percent of the time sometimes most of the time peace